Welcome to Electron Line, and here we're going to look at a very specific two-dimensional motion, namely circular motion. And we're going to look also at the associated acceleration with that circular motion. Now you may say, well, that's kind of strange. Let's say we have an object that has constant speed, so the magnitude of velocity doesn't change, uh, just the direction changes. How can there be acceleration if the speed doesn't change, if the object doesn't start going faster or slower? Well, notice that velocity is a vector quantity, acceleration is a vector quantity and since we want to know the acceleration let's say we want to find the average acceleration between going from point one to point two since the direction changes there must be acceleration so acceleration can be caused both by a change in speed or by change in direction all right so the definition would be that this is equal to the change in the velocity over the associated elapsed time and of course the change in velocity that can be written as v2 minus v1 divided by the t2 minus t1 the difference in the time at those two locations all right now let's do that graphically here we have the difference of two vectors so we can write that v2 minus v1 can be written as v2 plus the negative of v1 so let's go ahead and do that let's add v2 and the negative of v1 so here we have v2 and v2 looks like this. This is our v2 vector. Now we're going to add to that the negative of v1. Since v1 points directly upward, we're going to turn that around and have it point directly downward. So there is v1. And I'm assuming very small angles, of course. I made the angles here bigger so it's easier to see, but I'm assuming very, very small angles. So you can see that if I add these two together, the sum of v2 and the negative of v1, so this is actually the negative of v1, so that becomes this vector right there. So this vector is, uh, can be represented by v2 minus v1. Notice that vector points directly to the right from this location right here, so actually it points perpendicular from the path or the circular path right there. So this is here v2 minus v1. And then if we divide that by the time, now the time is simply a scalar quantity, so that can be large, that can be small. If it's small, of course, it goes uh, rather fast. If it's large, it goes rather slow, but it doesn't matter. If the object goes really fast, then delta t will be very small. If I divide this by a very small number, I will get a very large vector, meaning I have a large acceleration. But if the object is moving very slow and the delta t will be very very uh, large then of course I divide by a large number and then this vector will become very small so this is the the acceleration vector It's not equal to this the acceleration vector would be let's say equal to this that would be acceleration vector because acceleration vector is pointing the same direction as this v2 minus v1 but it's also divided by the difference in the time between those two points so again if this is small the acceleration vector will be large if this is large acceleration vector will be small but it will be in the very same direction as that so this means that the acceleration is towards the center of the circle of motion and therefore we call that centripetal acceleration centripetal means center seeking so this is known as the what we call the centripetal or center seeking acceleration and this of course happens even when you when the object doesn't travel around a circle simply along a curved path so let's say that this is the path of an object and you can see that while it's traveling this curved path it's changing direction and even if the acceleration is constant you will i mean the velocity is constant you can see that the acceleration will always be perpendicular and the amount of the acceleration of course depends upon how fast the curvature changes so you see that the acceleration here becomes very very small virtually non-existent here the acceleration is actually in the opposite direction because it's center seeking so this is what we would call the acceleration or the instantaneous acceleration anywhere along this path due to the travel along the curvature and all this while the speed and I'll just put in here speed is constant simply because of the change in the direction and the faster the direction changes the larger acceleration the slower the direction changes the smaller acceleration but always towards the center of curvature and that's of course center seeking or centripetal acceleration so here is simply a definition 
an understanding that whenever you go around the circular path or along a curved path, there will be an acceleration even in the absence of a change in speed, and that acceleration can be defined by the change in the vectors between two different locations, the, vo the velocity vectors divided by the time it took to go from one to the other, and of course the direction is always perpendicular to the curvature. All right, and that's how you do that.